Welcome to part three of the Skinwalker Ranch Deep Dive. In the previous two parts, we've covered the history of the ranch. We've discussed previous owners and looked at their experiences, from the Sherman family to the eventual handover to Robert Bigelow and his team of investigators. Before we get into this episode properly, I want to mention a few things. So firstly, there's an amazing channel and podcast show by Sean Ryan. So Sean is a former Navy SEAL and former contractor for the CIA. He spends his time speaking to military veterans and on his channel they discuss everything from elite missions to the psychological effects and PTSD. The reason that I feel compelled to mention Sean at this stage is because he did a lengthy interview with the current owner of Skinwalker Ranch and Sean, being the super nice guy that he is, is fairly open in saying that his content can be used freely in the interests of truth. So I just want to take this wee minute and thank Sean. I'll leave links to his channel and the subsequent interview in the description below. So let's get into it. Brandon Fugel defies the conventional image of a ranch owner. He has garnered renown as a prominent figure within the realm of commercial real estate. Hailing from Utah, he serves as the chairman of Colliers International, a global real estate powerhouse. Fugel's extensive tenure in the real estate domain has elevated him to a respected stature in the corporate arena, marked by his involvement in numerous high-profile transactions throughout his career. While Fugel's domain of expertise primarily revolves around real estate, his venture into the realm of the paranormal was somewhat unforeseen. His connection to Skinwalker Ranch materialised when he acquired it from aerospace magnate Robert Bigelow in 2016. Fugel's ownership of Skinwalker Ranch signified the dawn of a new era for the property. Fully aware of its mysterious reputation and the thorough investigations previously conducted by the NIDS team, Fugel opted to embrace the challenge. His driving forces were a profound curiosity to fathom the mysteries enveloping the ranch and a genuine aspiration to make a meaningful contribution to scientific research within this distinct field. Under Fugel's stewardship, Skinwalker Ranch has shifted into a nexus of scientific exploration. He has assembled a group of experts, researchers and scientists, pooling their talents to conduct meticulous inquiries into the peculiar phenomena documented on this property. This comprehensive, multidisciplinary approach encompasses the study of an array of phenomena, ranging from sightings of unidentified flying objects and unexplained cattle mutilations to the investigation of electromagnetic anomalies and occurrences reminiscent of portals. He developed relationships with a team of science advisors who, unbeknownst to him, were simultaneously advising an elusive billionaire based in Las Vegas named Robert Bigelow. I was surprised to receive a call from the two senior science advisors that had, had been on our board uh, with the question uh, as you know, asking if I would be interested in having a, a discussion and a meeting with Mr. Bigelow regarding a ranch in northeastern Utah known as Skinwalker Ranch. Bigelow, known for his ventures in real estate development and entrepreneurship, appeared to be a kindred spirit of sorts. Following the closure of their research project back in 2013, he was surprised to receive a call from the two senior science advisors who had been on their board. They posed a question, inquiring if he would be interested in engaging in a discussion and meeting with Mr. Bigelow concerning a ranch in northeastern Utah known as Skinwalker Ranch. They asked if he had any familiarity with the place, to which he acknowledged having heard of it through a book entitled The Hunt for the Skinwalker, published in the mid-2000s. He chuckled to himself and admitted that he didn't know if there was any truth to it, but he remembered it being an entertaining read at the time. He conveyed his scepticism, mentioning that he had never witnessed a UFO, a ghost or a strange orb. He further pointed out that he had just concluded funding a project that employed scientific rigour and discipline to debunk the core claims related to such phenomena. He expressed his lack of interest in fringe topics and his belief in the existence of a natural, prosaic explanation for the claims being made. However, they continued to insist, stating that there was much more to this situation than meets the eye. Considering his role as a real estate mogul and advisor in the Intermountain West, he seemed to be a potential fit for a joint venture, or at the very least, a discussion with Mr. Bigelow. 
he agreed and eagerly accepted the opportunity to meet and discuss this matter. Subsequently, he travelled to Las Vegas and found himself at Mr Bigelow's aerospace compound, which struck him as the closest thing to a James Bond villain lair that he had ever seen. Bigelow was unwilling to disclose any data, primarily because the ranch had been part of a Pentagon-funded black budget programme between 2007 and 2013. He also expressed a desire to maintain the privacy of this information. In agreement with this perspective, it was ultimately decided that starting with a clean slate would assist in establishing a baseline for the following investigation. This approach was deemed likely to enhance the efforts to identify a natural explanation for the phenomena that was observed. Not long after the handover was complete and Brandon had made multiple trips out to the property, he was being shown around by some remaining members of the NID security team. He became acutely aware of animal remains, carcasses and skeletons that appeared to have been purposefully hung on various fence posts around the edge of the property. After asking about this, he was told that the Native American residents that surrounded the area placed these artifacts on the fence lines to bless them and keep the evil, demonic and otherworldly entities off their properties. In fact, the tribal leaders had told their people not even to look the way of Skinwalker Ranch and avoid the property at all costs. Brandon was a skeptic. He certainly didn't believe any of the outlandish claims that were made previously, but he was curious and was determined to debunk this phenomenon. I mean, sure, there were early instances of strange sightings of UFOs in the sky. In summer of 2016, one of the researchers based at the ranch had called Brandon up and excitedly told him that he had captured images or of a UFO or a UAP in the skies above the ranch, to which Brandon had said, look, drop everything and get to my office ASAP. My surveyor uh, contacted me one day with, uh, with a report that he'd just captured the image of a UFO. It was right about noon in uh, June of 2016. And I said, really, are you sure? And he said, yeah, I, 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 have, I have it on my, my camera. And I told him, will you stop everything right now? Don't talk to anyone else. Drive straight to my office because I want the metadata. I want to download that picture without it being corrupted, without it being compromised. I want it directly on my graphic director's computer. At the time that Brandon Fugel acquired the ranch in 2016, he was on the board of the National Parks Council of the Boy Scouts of America, and as such, he didn't really want it disclosed to the public of his involvement and subsequent stewardship of Skinwalker Ranch. In fact, his initial intent was to clear up the ranch and donate it to the Boy Scouts, because he really didn't believe that anything supernatural or paranormal was taking place. He had recruited Jim Morse as ranch manager and as a community liaison. Joining the team at that point was Thomas Winterton as ranch superintendent. Candace Lindy and Tom Lewis were brought in also as caretakers. This was to assist the team in knowing every inch of the property. Eric Bard was also brought in as principal science investigator for the ranch, where he now resides permanently as he set up a low-profile observational science program. Pretty soon, Brandon was approached by the History Channel, and despite his best efforts, he was talked into the whole investigation being televised. In case you were completely unaware at this point, the hit TV show Curse of Skinwalker Ranch covers all the happenings as it unfolds. As of August 2023, the show has just finished up the fourth season. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've still got a lot to cover here. There was a notable incident early on when Brandon and his team were out surveying the ranch one afternoon. Alongside them, they had a security detail and in particular an individual called George. George was a big six foot plus ex-military chap. They had strange experiences all day with equipment malfunctioning and Eric Bard's mobile phone was playing up. This alone would be a regular occurrence on and around the ranch and would be seen in later years once the show started being filmed. They had dropped off their equipment at the main homestead in order to charge it and they became aware that George was missing. Brandon, followed by a few others, had gone out to see him and began calling his name. It was at that point that the whole group became aware of an unusual sensation. Their hearing seemed to be abruptly impacted, as if they had just walked into a soundproof room. They likened it to the sensation one might encounter in an antiochic chamber or a soundproof room, a sudden shift in frequency resulting in all ambient noise disappearing completely. 
they could only replicate this sensation by cupping their hands over their ears. In the distance, they observed George standing fully upright in a UTV, which was parked near to the other homestead building. Perplexed by this, they called out George's name, but the sound came out all muffled, like yelling underwater. As they approached closer to the vehicle and called George's name again, their hearing suddenly returned to normal. As this happened, George's eyes fluttered open and they asked about what had happened. George would reveal that when they had all disembarked from the vehicle, he had stood up but suddenly found himself paralysed. He was completely unable to speak or move and everything had gone black. George, now aware about 10 minutes had passed, expressed feeling awed and disturbed by this entire experience. Fugel himself would go on to have personal experiences during one of his travels throughout the ranch with some of his team. At one point they stopped the vehicle in the middle of the day as they were all stunned to see a metallic craft hovering silently above the mesa. And as we're about halfway back to Homestead One or the ranch house or the command center as we now call it, the other security professional in the back starts shouting, stop the vehicle, stop the vehicle. And I'm driving, I'm just trucking along, driving this little Polaris UTV. And I look back and he's waving his hands, pointing up ahead. So I, I, I bring the vehicle to a stop. And he's just shouting, he says, look at that, look at that. And sure enough, I look right where he's pointing, right ahead of us, right above the mesa at four o'clock in the afternoon on October 14th, and there is a 40, 50 foot long silver grayish disc-like object. What can only be described as a flying saucer. And it's just sitting there in, in broad daylight, clear as day, right above the mesa. Probably about 100, 100 feet above the mesa or so. And we're all sitting there astonished. I'm like, you guys see that? And he's like, yeah, that's what I, I was trying to get you to stop, stop the vehicle. Within a couple of seconds, it changes position. It literally blinked from one position to another. I could outline and discuss the myriad of events that have been uncovered during the TV show. Let's just say that there's countless events and incidents of high strangeness, all documented and very compelling. It's a greater liability. No one understands what a liability this is. I have yet to take a penny personally relative to these efforts. I've never opened a bank account for adamantium real estate for the entity that controls the ranch. I have purposely donated, assigned any proceeds that would be due to me to, to other causes, you know, from scholarships, you know, to cancer research. I have no interest in taking a penny relative to this endeavor. And so all really profit know. coming to you from this show no. goes to charity. Yeah. That's amazing. Charity and other efforts. I mean, we have used some uh, funds in order to help bolster the infrastructure that have gone to, to vendors, but no, no money, not one penny has made its way into my pocket personally by design. You know, sometimes when weird stuff happens, it doesn't mean that we jump to the wildest ideas like aliens or spooky creatures there might be a simple, natural explanation for things like those mysterious cattle incidents and strange lights. Maybe it's something science hasn't figured out yet, but it doesn't have to be all flashy like aliens or skinwalkers. Even smart folks like Kelleher thought about things like the Earth's plates shifting as a possible reason, but it didn't quite fit the bill. Perhaps this place has unique qualities that lead to some rare stuff in the sky or the ground that we don't see anywhere else in the world, for reasons unknown. But here's where it gets even more interesting. If you believe the stories of the many folks who were there, it's like there was some kind of guiding force behind the strange events. What could that force be? Well, that's up for debate, and some folk like to imagine all sorts of things. I mean, it might sound like a sci-fi movie with aliens, but some people also think it could be super advanced humans, or beings from another dimension. To us, it's kind of like splitting hairs between them. And then there's the whole cryptozoology angle. What were those weird dog-like creatures and were they connected to these supposed aliens? Some folks even suggest that maybe the Shermans were dealing with just ghosts, especially because of all the weird stuff like objects moving around. But just so you know, when people talk about poltergeist activity, 
they're not necessarily saying it's ghosts. This is just a way of describing things moving around in a strange and unexplained way. Right, in my opinion, I think there's something definitely going on here. Skeptics will always be skeptic, and rightly so. I can tell you for a fact that I am super skeptical when it comes to all things paranormal and supernatural. I would be more inclined to believe that phenomena such as ghosts or strange sightings like that could very well be an interdimensional answer. If I were held against a wall and asked whether I think that ghosts are real, then no I don't. But if I'm wrong, I would say it's more likely to be a strange multidimensional anomaly as opposed to the spirits of dead folk. It's been theorised that there are multiple and possibly infinite dimensions running parallel to our own. There are documented cases of people supposedly slipping in and out of said dimensions and some cases of people never returning. I simply think that humankind has the inability to comprehend what's really going on but I feel that we are on the cusp of getting answers and maybe, just maybe, what's going on at Skinwalker Ranch, I think that could help us understand this. To be honest, this topic, I mean, I could go on and talk about it for hours and hours. And you know what? I might just do that. Whenever I find the time, I might make another massive deep dive video about the entire UFO and UAP phenomenon, especially with everything that's been happening recently with the new evidence come to light in front of Congress. The thing with Skinwalker Ranch is this. As I've said before, it's not without its challenges, especially if it's to be believed that whatever is out there is an intelligence far beyond our own. Despite these challenges, there are hundreds of well-documented eyewitness accounts, not only from the NITS team, but also from neighbours. You went to Basin residents and curious visitors to the ranch. Skinwalker Ranch is a weird place with strange happenings that many find hard to believe. Now let's address the big question. Could the whole thing just be a hoax? Were the Shermans making up these stories to get rid of a problematic property? It's doubtful, because why invent such wild stories that could damage your reputation and land value? Plus, UFOs and strange creatures have been reported in the region for centuries, even before the Shermans. This suggests the phenomena weren't unique to Skinwalker Ranch and couldn't be mere imagination. Robert Bigelow believed in it enough to buy the property and invest millions in studying it for a decade. The phenomena were also witnessed by the investigative team, who were initially skeptical PhD professors. Some skeptics suggest George Knapp and Robert Bigelow created the entire thing to turn the ranch into a supernatural tourist attraction. But that didn't happen. Bigelow protected the property for 20 years, making it only making only minor changes. Consider the accounts of locals going back centuries. These experiences predate Bigelow, Knapp, the Shermans, and the Myers' involvement. So if it's not a hoax, then what's happening? Were all these people suffering from some mass delusion? It's highly unlikely, given the sheer number of people involved. NIDS ruled out environmental factors also and didn't find a common psychological thread pointing to a mass delusion. Physical evidence, like footprints, mutilated cattle, vaporised dogs and detectable magnetic fields, well, that was often left behind. Proof that these weren't just imagined events. Could Native American legends about all the skinwalkers be true? The Utes believed the Navajo cursed their land after being pushed out. Some phenomena match these stories, but not all of it can be attributed to these skinwalker entities. Another theory is that the military are involved. Terry Sherman did suspect this, suggesting that the military tested secretive tech on the ranch, with the residents as unwitting test subjects. Remote viewers, though controversial, while they sketched the ranch's layouts and sensed disturbing energy fields. Some viewed the ranch as a military base with strange personnel and interdimensional elements, but this theory has issues. What about the strange creatures, emotion affecting orbs, portals and events predating the military? Some people think Skinwalker Ranch is an interdimensional gateway where entities can enter and exit our reality. Maybe all paranormal phenomena worldwide came from such places. It's like they show themselves when they want to, but have epicenters where they flood through and Skinwalker Ranch is just one of them. Whatever haunts the ranch is intelligent, but its agenda is unclear. It differentiates between animals and humans, harming animals indiscriminately. It seemed to enjoy tormenting the Shermans and the NIDS team, even reading minds and listening to private conversations. Bigelow, in one of his many interviews, stated that without a shadow of a doubt, he firmly believes 
that whatever is going on at that ranch, it can be classed as a sentient, precognitive, non-human intelligence. So basically, an entity or group of entities that are not governed by space and time, they know what's happening before it happens. Yeah, with with all humility, we are we are not in control. Whatever we are dealing with, whatever we are interacting with at Skinwalker Ranch appears to be several steps ahead of us and has such advanced capabilities that it's important that we address it with humility and reverence. I think uh, a lot of this is being revealed because it wants to be revealed. And I know that may sound hokey, but I... Thanks so much for joining me on this journey. I'm super grateful to each and every single one of you. Every like on a video, every comment that you guys leave, it all means the world to me. So thank you. Take care of yourselves out there, folks. Tell someone that you love them. And above all else, keep smiling. <laughs>